Today, I'm talking to Mary Johnson with Vitamin Candy, and we are talking about what the heck sea moss and elderberry is. I have Mary Johnson with us from Vitamin Candy. So Mary, could you please introduce yourself to everyone? Hello everyone, I'm Mary Johnson, an owner of Vitamin Candy LLC, DK Fitness Studio and Vitamin Candy Cafe. I am an authoress, um, long time in the fitness world, over 10 years now. Um, I'm just happy to be able to have this platform to share with you guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> Um, so on my timeline on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, it has kind of exploded with, um, I have, I do have a lot of fitness and health professionals on my pages. And I would say maybe definitely within the last six months, I have seen an explosion and hype over sea moss and elderberry. Mm -hmm. And I have not tried it. I did preview, like kind of smell and preview a sample of yours, but I have not tried it. But first, can we talk about the sea moss? What is it exactly? So sea moss is an algae that's originally from like the Caribbean and the West Indies islands and stuff like that, um, all across like the North Atlantic Ocean, really. So it comes from the ocean. A lot of people get it confused with uh, like regular seaweed that comes out the lake. <laughs> it is not okay. that. Um, I was introduced to it back in 2010 by a friend named Joy, Joy Jones. Um, she told me about Dr. Seabee and all of the products that her and her family was using to do like this herbal cleanse and stuff like that. And um, Dr. Seabee at the time had a sea moss that was broken down into powder form and was mixed with bladder wax. So I started using it back then and it literally changed my life. Um, a lot of people, like I said, they get it confused with regular seaweed from the, from the uh, lake, but it's not that. Um, it's actually a superfood that has over 92 minerals that your body needs on a daily basis. And it's, I mean, it helps with all kinds of functions like um, uh, anywhere from like cancer, if you're having trouble with that, high blood pressure. And it's been known to date that a lot of folks have, um, had better cholesterol and, you know, got off of medications that has to do with high blood, diabetes, um, even some cancer medications. So it's literally a superfood. Okay. So do we kind of just eat this? It looks like it's in like a jelly form from, from what I can see from it. You mentioned just kind of like a powder form, but do we just eat spoonfuls of it? Do we mix it in with something? So it comes, you can make it into a powder form. But I do, I do it in both ways. Um, you can grind up the actual sea moss and make powder form, or you can make it into a gel. And um, the gel form, you just take your, your sea moss that you get from wherever, whoever your supplier is, and you can soak it. I, I recommend soaking it over 24 hours because it comes from the ocean. So you may get a little bit of sea creatures and stuff in there. You don't want to be eating that. I mean, it's actually kind of interesting. I'm fascinated with life itself. So, you know, anything that's living, creature of God. So I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I see this. Um, and you soak it. And then a lot of people like to blend it, you know, put it in the blender and make it that way. Um, I don't do that process. I like to let mine, after I've done that, sit overnight and, um, you know, let it do its natural form and it, and it looks like jello. So, um, and a lot of people boil it, put it in spring water. It just depends on the person. You can go on YouTube, find out many different ways that you can create your sea moss. Um, but just for me, I just, I like to keep everything in its natural form. Just soak it and get all the creatures out of there and uh, put it in like a, a mason jar. People call it candy. You can can it, put it in the mason jar, let it form overnight. Okay. So what, what is it, what does it taste like? Nothing. I'm, it depends. So you can infuse <laughs> sea moss with a lot of different things. I infuse it with uh, elderberry. I do it with wheatgrass. I do it with burdock root, which is adding a couple more minerals to the sea moss itself. Okay. So elderberry 
battery, you will have about four, four to six more like iron and zinc and, um, you know, uh, potassium, stuff like that. That'll be added to the 92 minerals that you already have in your regular sea moss. Um, okay. But it doesn't taste like anything, though. For <laughs> me, it doesn't, I guess, because I'm so used to taking it. But if I had to put a taste on it, I would say like earthy. And you okay. Can mix this yeah. Okay. And then how, so do you recommend that we take this like a spoonful daily or a couple times a day? One to two tablespoons a day so that your system can get used to it and start cleaning out parasites that you have in your body. Especially if you're a meat eater, because meat eaters carry around a lot of parasites and don't even realize it. And you're trying to figure out why I keep catching a cold or why I'm always stuffy, my ears getting cloggy, my skin doesn't look right. It's because you haven't given your body a proper cleanse. Now we can go on the juicing and we can do all of the healthy eating, but sometimes we need that extra push. It's just like going to the doctor and getting your colon cleanse. Um, you're just doing it the all natural way. You're not using a tool to do it. So eat this one or two times a day. And if you don't want to eat it, you can mix it in a drink. You can put it in your food. You can put it in on your skin. I use it as a face mask every single day. And okay. Like that way. Just some, you can eat it. You can, um, like I said, add, add it in drinks or even mix it in your regular food dishes. If you make a, a bowl of rice, add it in there. It's going to melt in there so that you can get it in. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, right. Like, I'm, um, I'm doing that. <laughs> right. No, I am going to try it though. I do want to try it. But um, <laughs> do you know, what about if you have food allergies? Is it something that we should take precaution of or, you know, um, before trying it or try it in small doses first? No, it's not. It's a superfood. So it comes straight from the ocean. Like I said, it's not a fish. It's, okay. not, it's not seaweed that comes from the lake. It's from the ocean. So if you think about that, that's all natural sources from the earth itself, from God. So you don't have to worry about any allergies at all because it's not related to a fish or any kind of like meat or anything or any like um, nuts or stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about any allergies, not even a case known to date that anyone has broken out or had some type of allergic reaction to sea moss. Okay. Why do you think it's been become so popular lately? Honestly, I believe that um, once uh, Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace, um, started to do this documentary about Dr. CB and um, his star power kind of created that listening audience that was starting to get in tune and like, okay, who is Dr. CB? Then people started doing research on it. And okay. that was one of the number one herbs that was always spoken about with Dr. CB. His name is behind that. Um, although he did not create it, it's mm -hmm. still that he was, uh, you know, a well-known person that, that was tied to it. That's just my belief. And then after a while, once we had this COVID-19 epidemic breakout, people started saying, oh, well, I know this person that does all natural herbs and they never get sick. So maybe I should mm -hmm. start getting into the all natural herb thing. And then that became popular. Also being vegan and vegetarian, all that stuff became popular a couple of years ago. So now this is just kind of like, I think it's like the number three formula that everybody's starting to get into, which is amazing. I'm super excited about because I've been preaching this since 2010 <laughs> and everybody looked at me like, that's disgusting. I'm right. tasting that. You're, that juice tastes too earthy. And I'm like, no, you really need this. And now people are really listening and they're tearing my doors down for it. I'm, it's a blessing. I'm happy folks are inquiring about it. And so what about elderberry? So I, I don't know a lot about elderberry either. <laughs> Only that I have seen people post about it and then reading through comments, people are saying, well, no, there's some negative side effects to it and you shouldn't take elderberry. So elderberry is a flowering plant that um, is like a, a acid or AC or whatever you want to call it. People pronounce it totally <laughs> different, but it's the original name is called Sambuscus and it's in that family. Um, it's just like a flowering plant. It looks like a grape, but just small. So think about when you were a kid and you would see all those berries all over the ground, mm -hmm. like in front of your grandma's house, or maybe you even had a tree in your yard that had those berries. That's an elderberry. Okay. And so they would be like, don't eat that because you're yeah. going to poison. <laughs> no, actually, it's good for you. And it's good for things like, um, like I said, potassium, your iron, your zinc, your cholesterol, stuff like that. 
And so this elderberry thing started to get popular because what it does is it adds energy to you. Um, it helps with controlling stress levels like to the max. I mean, you literally feel like your mood is going to change like that as soon as you start uh, taking this. And it also adds a couple more minerals to the sea moss. So all mm -hmm. these things that you're getting to control your cholesterol and one of the number one things that people always asking about is that weight loss. Yeah. It helps, yeah, it helps control your appetite. Um, it's almost like a suppressant if you get enough in there in your system on a daily basis. So it's like another superfood that's an additive to the sea moss. So everybody's been kind of like comparing that and they're just now getting hip to the syrup. But be careful. I say make your own, um, get your own supply of elderberries. Um, if you're not with a person, getting it from a person that's like a herbalist or really know their stuff about it, like myself or um, for Waki Bar, shout out to him, um, then don't do it because you never know what kind of sugars are being added to it. And it's nothing but all natural herbs. I know for sure our way. So just be careful about just doing any elderberry. Do your research, know what it's for. And don't overconsume either because you don't need to be doing that either. Just, you know, make sure you're taking one to two teaspoons, not tablespoons, teaspoons a day. That's all you need. And you'll okay. be fine. Get it in your system and you'll be fine. So, do you mix that in? Can you mix that in with like a smoothie or something? Yeah. I, um, you can mix it in a smoothie. You can put it in your um, water. I don't recommend any juices or milks and stuff like that because it's already, you know, sweet enough of a berry. So you don't want to start adding extra sugar on top of sugar um, because it turns into fat. Sugar just turns into fat and we don't want that in our body. But I just say do it straight up or you can add it to a smoothie if you want to. But like I, like I said, I, I'm used to this stuff. So I just take all of my stuff straight up, get a little measuring spoon, teaspoon, pour it in there boop, and I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, or I forgot this. I I make elderberry capsules. So the actual mm -hmm. elderberry that I have, dry it out. Like I said, with the sea moss, you can grind it up and put it into a capsule. Preferably because I'm vegan, I like to use like vegetarian capsules so that no one's getting any animal products in it or any um you know dairy mm -hmm. while they're taking the capsule because people can break out. But I make elderberry capsules as well. So you can put the, you know, put it in a capsule and then you take one capsule a day. Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that you're vegan. So how long have you been vegan? This is year going on year three now. Um, I was vegetarian before that. And before that, I was a pes pescatarian. Um, and it's it's changed my life. I feel the like, I feel like I'm a teenager, literally. Like a, a, that is... I can't even explain it. I, I recommend it, but to each his own, you know. <laughs> so I didn't know you. I've only long, very. I haven't known you for a long time. At least when you were at your heaviest, I didn't know you. I've only seen pictures. Can you share what you, how much you used to weigh versus what you, what you weigh now? Yeah. As, as a matter of fact, hold on. Give me one second. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna, I'm going to grab the picture before I explain that. <laughs> okay. You are going to be shocked when she shows you this before and after picture. It's really unbelievable the amount of weight that she has lost. Um, I know she's a vegan. For me, I don't know. I've, I've thought about becoming vegan. I'm not there yet. I can definitely see... Um, eating chicken and fish. I definitely try to cut back on red meat, um, but I'm going to ask her some questions to maybe you're on the fence or have questions about how to transition as well. And some of the benefits that she can share with us um, of being vegan. So should be quite interesting. <laughs> so I am back. So this is my, wait a minute. Let me go over. Okay. This is my before, if you can see it. Oh, yeah, moving right. over the other way. Okay, here we go. Wait, I need to go to There way. you go, right there. All right, so this is my before. I'll go close up. All right. And um, as you can see, I used to weigh 248 pounds. And um, this was back in uh, 2009. I was that weight for about four years of my life. I didn't grow up as an overweight kid. Um, I was very 
into sports and stuff. I even ran track, um, but I just kind of let myself go, you know, let life get in the way with being in college and um, moving out of the house at 17 after I graduated, wanting to be grown so fast, you know, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. just kind of letting all that stuff take over me loving myself. And then I ultimately just gain weight, just eating all of the wrong things for comfort or just like that's easy as I'm going to grab it because it's there, you know, instead of taking the time to prepare stuff the right way so that I can, you know, stay healthy and kind of lost it for like four years. And then in 2009, I was like, look, that's it. I'm not going to keep doing this. I had worked for Cleveland School District and I, um, I had worked with a special needs unit and the kids were super, super, super active. And this is when I was at my heaviest. I probably, I feel like I've reached a little over 248. I had to be almost, almost like 260 or something because it was, the weight was so heavy. My breasts were so heavy that I couldn't even breathe walking up one flight of stairs. And I, um, mm. I was like, yeah. I was like, look, you know what? This is it. Like, you got to really get back to who you are and, you know, let the real Mary come out of that body. And um, on my lunch break, I was online on the Internet and I kept hearing about this boot camp. And I was like, you know what? Let me sign up and see what this is all about. I did that. And, and the rest is history. I became a trainer 2010 and that, that was it. And I just fell in love with the whole process, um, not knowing that this was going to be one of the things that God blessed me with to help other people. So I had to go through that to get to this level. Yeah. So do you, do you eat? My weakness is sweets. Do you eat sweets? Um, I eat healthy sweets. <laughs> I'm a big chocolate <laughs> or, um, I would love just like any kind of chocolate, white chocolate, just regular milk chocolate, but now dark chocolate is good for your heart. So I do have dark chocolate from time to time. Um, if I want to drink a glass of wine, I'll have some red wine because it's good for the heart um, and it processes through your body better. And it's actually good for your skin. People don't know that either. Um, and so, no, I think I've disciplined myself to the point where I don't have any of those things that I just have to have because I knew once I went from that picture, my before picture to who I am now, that I was never going to go back. And when God gave me the platform to start helping other people, it was like, how dare you? How could you? You know, it's kind of like contradicting. Right. You know, like lying. Like you're, you're not even a true person because you wasn't strong enough to withhold this um, withhold this image that I feel like God gave me. And not that I owe anybody anything. It's just that it's my promise to myself because I yeah. love myself that much that I didn't want to be, you know, overweight. I don't want to be overweight or unhealthy ever again. So I actually know, I know a handful of people who are vegan and some of those people that I know that are vegan are actually a little overweight. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this thought that I think that kind of goes with it, that if you're vegan, then you should be thin, you know, and fit. And I often see people that say they're vegan and they're actually overweight. Do you know what's causing that? I mean, I kind of, I, I, I have my own idea of what I think it is, but what do you think is the cause of that? I think because when people become vegan, they think, oh, I'm just not eating meat anymore or I'm not eating dairy anymore. And they don't realize that the food that you're putting in has to be according to your body type. You can't just go off and go carb loading when your body type doesn't fit that description per se. So if you don't know your body type and you want to switch over and transition to that, that's the first thing you need to do is your research on what kind of body you have, how many carbs it can take and vegetables. We can have a numerous amount of that all day long and also the sugar intake, and you know, because that turns into fat. So I think, it's the overindulging on carbs and sugars that make people gain weight versus looking like a, you know, looking like a normal, healthy weight or, you know, vegan. They don't understand that that carb overload is really what's taking them the reverse way. And all vegans are not healthy. They just not eating meat or dairy, you know? So mm -hmm. I think they really need to break it down and understand what vegan is. Being vegan is in how to 
put it towards them in particular and not just a general thing to what everyone else is doing just because they're not eating meat or dairy. Yeah, I definitely think they try to replace. So, okay, I can't have these um, buffalo wings over here. So ne now let me make buffalo wings, whatever this, whatever that equivalent that, that would be and still having that sauce and that sugar is what's happening as well. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned knowing your body type um, and what, and I actually through my own kind of journey and trying to pay attention have noticed like, okay, well I can have sugar. I just, I need to learn what my limit is and when to break that off. But how do you know what your, your body type is? Um, like, because some people can't eat a, a lot more carbs and not gain weight. Whereas some people like, if I look at a candy bar, I'm going to gain weight over here. You know, how do you determine that? I recommend um, doing some research online. Start with WebMD first. WebMD is a notable source that will give you information about anything that pertains to health. Number two, find you a person that does nutrition or um, like a certified trainer, certified nutritionist um, that or herbalist that actually understands the body and how it works and really get in depth with them about your your um, the things that you crave, you know, and stuff like that, because they can help get you to that level. For myself, I do an assessment with all of my clients um, through my VK Fitness portion of the company. And I have them fill out a form and then I take that form and put all their demographic information and plug it into my database and then it pops up and tell me if they're an endomorph or mesomorph or ectomorph. Mm -hmm. And just to give a give a little, a little bit of tidbit, um, it's three of them. It's three different types. Endomorph, ectomorph, or mesomorph. So WebMD is a place to start, but I highly recommend you get in someone that knows what they're doing and knows about the body. Even ask your doctor. Your doctor can probably tell you that. Like, what body type am I? You know, and mm -hmm. if they're a nutritionist, they can get even more in depth because you need all of that demographic information to figure that out. And they can go to Amazon.com and buy my book and also figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's charts, charts everywhere that tells you what the three different body types. You just compare it to that. Yeah. Okay. So well, um, another thing about be being vegan. So there's like a, there's always this longstanding misconception that, well, you need to eat meat for the protein piece of it. And knowing that the protein is not from the animal itself, it's from mm -hmm. what they are eating. And so what vegetables provide high protein, like as a replacement? So honestly, you don't need protein and i know a lot of people gonna argue with me on this but you don't think about back in the caveman times and how they were surviving off of nothing but you know uh leafy greens and uh, fruits and stuff like that that's all natural sources from the, from the earth so you don't need it but if you're just like one of those people that's just like headstrong about the proteins and telling yourself that you need this broccoli cauliflower those are some of the vegetables and stuff that um, give you a natural source of protein without even having to worry about meat. And being a vegan, you do get to see a lot of different ways to cook those vegetables. So you may hear somebody say a cauliflower steak or, you know, yeah. um, a, a vegan burger that may consist of like uh, sweet potatoes or like chickpeas. That's a source of protein. Any kind of beans um, are sources of protein and that they make the, to kind of fill the void to make it feel like they're eating, you know, or like it's some type of protein, uh, like a burger or steak or chicken or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is there anything that maybe I didn't ask you that you want to share with everyone that you feel that may be important or they need to know? Yes. I would like to tell people today that this COVID-19 epidemic is literally a wake up call. Get in tune with who you are in the inside first. Tap into that spirituality because all this time that we have at home being quarantined, it's a time to take care of yourself. And if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your families, 
your sisters, your cousin, your mother, your brother, none of that. You can't mm -hmm. do that if you don't start taking care of yourself. So take it as a message, a good message from God saying, hey, it's time to do something different. And I know it's not a good thing because some people are losing their lives behind it. Um, stay in prayer and don't let this overtake your mind state of getting healthy. Jump on this on this wellness way. It's so many different free resources in the city of Cleveland. It's so many different free resources on the internet alone. People are giving away free memberships to, you know, mm -hmm. to work out um, and free recipes. As a matter of fact, every Friday I go live at one o'clock and I let you ask me anything that you want to know. And other people usually have to pay for this. I'm even offering my services for a little or nothing just to get people back on the right track. But you have to start with you in order to get to the next level. Use this as a transition to get to that next level. So once we come out of quarantine, you'll be ready to take off and running because if you don't look me feel good, you don't look good and you can't do anything good. <laughs> yes, thank you. So um, are, have you been, um, have you been working? Are you still open right now during the quarantine period? I am. I am. Vitamin Candy Cafe, Glen Village location is open from 1130 to 4, Monday through Saturday. I do have a business line that some people don't use and maybe they just don't know. It's 440-373-7618. Uh, and you could call that number and we will let you in. Vitamin Candy Cafe is a grab and go facility. So you don't, you were never sitting down and eating in there. It's a quick grab and go. Anything that I provide, you could just pay for it, walk straight out the door. None of my like wrap sandwiches, salads, or rice bowls take more than five minutes, if that, to even prepare. Even even the juices, I press it right there before you. And um, I have all that all natural herbs that you need. So come and see me. This is um I wanted to show you guys what elderberry syrup looks like. This is my one of my sizes. This is mm -hmm. an eight ounce. Um, so they can purchase that if they need it. And this is what the sea moss gel looks like. This is my personal package, but because I've been dipping in it. But this <laughs> is what mine look like. And when, when I said I don't like to take it through too many processes, some people make it creamy. Nothing wrong with that. It's totally up to you. But that's just I sell that too. Um, I have all, all natural herbs from spirulina to ginger, turmeric, all that stuff. So like I said, 11.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Saturday. And if you can't get down there, then you can go to my website at vitamincandy.com and you can order anything that you need from me on there and I do shipping. And we will soon have a delivery as well. 